Hello. Uh, today I'm going to be painting a uh, a picture of a swan landing in a body of water. Uh, it was actually a the the place was Wells, and the in Wells is a, a place called the Bishop, Bishop's Palace, and there's a moat around there, and uh, it's quite beautiful actually, and there's often quite a lot of um, swans and ducks um, milling around in that area so this painting was based on a photograph that a friend of mine actually took Will, Will Smith, no Will Smith, Will Glenn <laughs> anyway so I've done the, uh, I'm painting using his image to put a painting together so first of all I'm just wetting up to the edges of the wings of the swan um, just so that the colour that I'm going to lay on there is going to run nicely into it I'm making a mixture of uh, olive greens uh, and a little bit of uh, Prussian blue with um, upper rose a little bit of uh, what's the other colour I used? Um, crimson alizarin. I can never say it right. Anyway, crimson, crimson alizarin with Prussian blue to make my purple, and the rest of the colour is just uh, greens. And I would use a little bit of a uh, uh, paint grey as well, just at the top. But anyway, just working down here from the top to the bottom there's not much happening on the top there anyway so you're not missing much the fact that it's, it's quite hidden off screen but anyway this will uh, you'll be able to see the main effect of what I've painted on what we're painting so I've got me board at an angle of about 15 degrees so it gives you a nice uh, natural run from the with the paint as it comes down. Just added a little bit of um, olive green there, and each each time, now and again I, I'll add a little bit of this purple colour, and also just dropping other colours dark colours, whatever you want to do really, but I'm using um, a little bit of purple, so there's a bit of iridium there, iridium green. <clears throat> so as my brushes, as I'm working further down, I'm making, getting finer and finer brushes. So this now is a number 12 brush, going all the way around the edge there. Just to flex that colour down. Need to lift some of that water off, I've got too much so I'm just sucking it back up there. Went a little bit crazy with my uh, colours, with my water. I want to make sure that it's always wet you see to do this, to get this um, smooth background, this gradiated background. So you have to make sure that you've always got a bead of paint at the bottom. So here I've added a little bit of the ultramarine, ultramarine blue with a touch of crimson alizarin with there. Putting that finely all the way around that swan's wing, making sure that I'll get a nice hard edge against that. Lift some of that out now. I don't want to risk it running down over that, that swan because you'll never get that white back again. that top of the wing I'm actually leaving I'm going to leave that 
the colour of paper. So very carefully going over the edge there and making sure that we've got a nice sharp edge over the top of that wing. Now I'm happy with it, so I've just added a little bit, well, quite a lot of uh, olive green there. Over there. Just added a little bit more of that ultramarine and um, crimson and as well, that purple colour. to try and get a, a similar colour around the other side of this this bird so now the splash of the bird I'm going to try and keep these areas very white, very clean as I work down to them. So I've got lots of pigment in this brush here. I may have to come down to a, a synthetic brush in a bit. So let's see how we're going with this. I'm leaving lots of shape for this splash. Over to my size 10. Um, synthetic brush. You've got more control over a synthetic brush than you do a, uh, a natural hairbrush. And I'm le leaving out little areas which will be foam of water being splashed up. to paint the water I'm going to leave little areas of white horizontal areas of white it could be it's just like the the way the light is hitting the tops of the ripples of the water that this swan is making as it's coming crashing down so it's created waves and little ripples So this needs to be done in a horizontal way and try and get it as horizontal as possible otherwise it just won't look right.
carefully drawn in the uh, the areas where this this splash is going to be so I don't lose sight of that it's easy to get carried away when you when you're working on something and you've just completely forget where you should be painting or where you shouldn't be painting so I'll change the brush again the bigger the area the bigger the brush now I'm trying to be mindful of the reflection of that wing is going to reflect in the water you know, like broken ripples I'm just allowing, allowing the tip of this brush just to touch this the paper. I don't want to be splodging paint down. Yeah, as we get closer to that third, there's a lot more white because there's more of a disturbance of the water and the further away we get from it there's less disturbance so fewer li ripples now I don't want to create any cauliflowers up there so I think that paint has done its job. We will be going over that back area anyway with a bit of um, grass on, on the embankment. But nevertheless, I'm going to lift it off. Otherwise, it'll start running into the drier areas and create horrible cauliflowers which are great when you want them as you make sure if you make sure that your paint is wet at the bottom you got a little bit of bead you can actually move away from that area and do a little bit of work elsewhere and know that you'll still be able to work on that when you come, you know, as you finish doing what you do. I'm slightly changing bits of colour on here, so we went for the olive green and now we're going to these blues and um, purples and things. So now I'm painting. Oh, I'm doing a negative painting of where the, the wings should be reflecting. I mean, all this is all done in the one go. You can't afford to leave it away. You have to finish this area first.
just when you think that one area is starting to dry just go back to it quickly make sure it remains wet all the way down until you finish that full that full area filmed this at a slight angle so uh, don't be thinking that uh, the, these lines aren't horizontal they are horizontal on the picture you know, as you will see at the end of this uh, this video change my brush again so a bigger brush bigger area a nice dark color for the bottom the closer it gets to you the darker your colors really should be it just it gives a sense of foreground It brings it right the way close to you. Just adding some ripples, darker ripples, and also with a with a brush and just lifting out here, just lifting out some um, some ripples, and that'll give a soft ripple. You can go a bit mad with these, so you have to really know when to stop. So I think we'll leave that to dry now. There you go, it's all dried. Now the next layer is going to be, I'm just going to, I've mixed a a colour of it's um, I think it's burnt umber it's all no raw raw sienna it is this and a little bit of orange just at this side of this uh, this reflection because this is going to reflect the uh, the underneath side of the swan fast forward this a little bit now a bit done so as you can see we've left white areas on the areas where it's going to be the lightest part of the reflection of the wings so now I'm going to concentrate a little bit on the underside of these wings So I've mixed the same mixture raw sienna 
and a little bit of um, a little bit of Payne's grain. I'm going to put a little bit of Payne's grain in this just to give it a bit of a bit more depth, just at the top. Only, only a very light air, light amount of it. Right, now what I'm going to do is, I'm going to just add water to this, and let it blend ever so gently to the bottom of that wing. that pigment that I've brought up with the water just to continue that right the way down and I'm going to add a bit more pigment as we come down to the uh, the underside where it's meeting the splash as we need to contrast that splash so we're adding some more pigment in there a little bit more of that Payne's grey with a bit of French ultramarine and um, crimson alizarin it's just like a purpley colour I want to contrast that that area of the underside of the bird and the uh, the stark white of the water. So we're going to go on right away to the same, all the way around the other, the other side of the the wing. So we'll just speed this bit up again, but now. Right, we've done that bit. Now I'm just going to add a f another level of shade to the underside of this, these wings. So I'm just using that raw sienna and creating a shadow in a shadow, as it were. Don't be too, too fussing about with this. You can get bogged down with one area and it just looks overworked and sometimes it's just best to skirt over it and just create some little bits. It doesn't have to look exactly like the photograph that you took of it. It's your interpretation of it. So And that seems to work on that side, doesn't it? So now we're going to do the same with the other side.
strengthening the other side now. As a wing, as the wing comes towards the body, make that arm so stronger. That was a shadow, and that the left side of the the swan's neck, our left side of it. Soften that a little bit with a let it dry, dry a little bit. Just to add some colour orange to this peak. This side, I want to create a, a bit of a backdrop to the scene where the bird is actually flying in, and there's some some grass at the back. We'll go all the way along. I'll speed this up now. So as we come to the final stages of this this painting, this is where we start bringing it all together, add the uh, the details to the beak. So I'm putting the the black mask of the swan on there. I think that will be a uh, just right, don't want to overdo this. But now I want to add a little stronger colour orange to that beak. It needs to be stronger. So careful not to touch that black just yet. I do want to uh, bring it down into the beak. But for the initially it needs to be just this clean orange colour there on the beak. Now, I'll just join those two and let nature do its stuff. As gravity brings it down. Now we've got the splash as it's hit the, hit the water. It needs to have a, a second colour to it really, just just to give it a little bit of depth just in certain areas we don't have to go too crazy with it otherwise we'll take away the white so I'm just using a little bit of um, a bit of sorry of um, paint grey with a, a few
few other colours of uh, pinks and mainly blues really, cool colours just to soften that. There's no hard and fast rule to this, you know, if you see an area that just feels like it could do with a shadow, just put it in. slowly working backward and forward and we mustn't forget to put the reflection of the beak in there obviously it can't be a direct image of it reversed it would have to be broken up with ripples so we just add a little bit in there to suggest just underneath underneath this splash there's going to be extra shadows where this where this splash has lifted up the water and it's reflecting down So the trick here now is just to keep adding a few um, shadows, which I will do, and I think I'll put a few shadows in the back as well. So there's the swan. I rub out the, uh, the the lines in a minute as you can see I've put a few extra shadows uh, re reflections in uh, at the rear of the bird well I hope you've enjoyed this and thank you for watching please subscribe thanks a lot bye bye